It was barely 11 months ago in Doha when my delegation made an appeal, an appeal to the world to open our eyes to the stark realities that we face. As then, we confronted a catastrophic storm that resulted in the costliest disaster in Philippine history. Less than a year hence, we cannot imagine that a disaster much bigger would come. With an apparent cruel twist of fate, my country is being tested by this hailstorm called Super Typhoon Haiyan. The initial assessment showed that Haiyan left a wake of massive destruction that is unprecedented, unthinkable, and horrific. Haiyan was estimated to have attained sustained winds of 315 kilometers per hour and gusts up to 378 kilometers per hour, making it the strongest typhoon in modern recorded history. The devastation is colossal. And as if this is not enough, another storm is brewing again in the warm waters of the Western Pacific. I shudder at the thought of another typhoon hitting the same places where people have not yet even managed to begin standing up. To anyone outside who continues to deny and ignore the reality that is climate change, I dare them, I dare them to get off their ivory towers and away from the comfort of their armchairs. I dare them to go to the islands of the Pacific, the Caribbean, the Indian Ocean, and see the impacts of rising sea levels. To the mountainous regions of the Himalayas and the Andes, to see communities confronting glacial floods, to the Arctic where communities grapple with the fast dwindling sea ice sheets, the large deltas of the Mekong, the Ganges, the Amazon, the Nile, where lives and livelihoods are drowned, to the hills of Central America that confront similar monstrous hurricanes, to the, to the vast savannas of Africa where climate change has likewise become a matter of life and death as food and water become scarce not to forget the monster storms in the Gulf of Mexico and the eastern seaboard of North America, as well as the fires that have raised down under. And if that is not enough, they may want to see what has happened to the Philippines now. Typhoons such as Haiyan and its impacts represent a sobering reminder to the international community that we cannot afford to delay climate action. In Doha, we asked, if not us, then who? If not now, then when? If not here, then where? What my country is going through as a result of this extreme climate event is madness. The climate crisis is madness. Mr. President, we can stop this madness right here in Warsaw. We need an emergency climate pathway. Mr. President, I speak for my delegation, but I, I speak, speak for the countless people who will no longer be able to speak for themselves after perishing from the storm, I speak also for those who have been orphaned by the storm. We can take drastic action now to ensure that we prevent a future where super typhoons become a way of life. We refuse to accept that running away from storms, evacuating our families, suffering the devastation and misery, counting our dead become a way of life. We simply refuse to. I wish to speak on a more personal note. Super Typhoon Haiyan, perhaps unknown to many here, made landfall in my own family's hometown. And the devastation is staggering. I struggle to find words even for the images that we see on the news coverage. And I struggle to find words to describe how I feel about the losses up to this hour, I agonize, waiting for word to the fate of my very own relatives. What gives me renewed strength and great relief is that my own brother has communicated to us and he had survived the, the onslaught. In the last two days, he has been gathering bodies of the dead with his own two hands. He is very hungry and weary as food supplies find it difficult to arrive in that hardest hit area. Mr. President, and I express this with all sincerity, in solidarity with my countrymen who are struggling to find food back home, and with my brother who has not had food for the last three days, with all due respect, Mr. President, and I mean no disrespect for your kind hospitality, I will now commence a voluntary fasting for the climate. 
This means I will voluntarily refrain from eating food during this COP until a meaningful outcome is in sight, until concrete pledges have been made to ensure mobilization of resources for the Green Climate Fund. We cannot afford a fourth COP with an empty GCF. This process, it has been called a farce. It has been called an annual carbon-intensive gathering of useless frequent flyers. It has been called many names, and this hurts. But we can prove them wrong. We can fix this. We can stop this madness right now, right here, in the middle of this football field, and stop moving the goalposts. Mr. President, Your Excellency, Honorable Minister, my delegation calls on you most respectfully to lead us and let Poland and Warsaw be remembered forever as the place where we truly cared to stop this madness. If this is our imperative here in Warsaw, you can rely on my delegation. Now, can humanity rise to this occasion? Mr. President, I still believe we can. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you, Philippines, for your great speech. I will invite now Nauru to make a statement. Thank you.